So, first things first, what's currently happening? See, currently, tech jobs, people are losing left, right and center. Okay, that's a given. Uh, the stats, as per what I've got is, every day, 510 tech workers are losing their jobs. That means one every three minutes. So, I finished uh, seven minutes. That means two guys already lost their job. Okay. So far, as per now, 2025, 144,000 tech workers have been laid off across 533 rounds of job cuts. A few years ago, a tech engineer, even a senior one with 10 years experience, got multiple job offers, got multiple uh, bonuses, joining bonuses. In fact, I know this for a fact because there were so many people who used to come to me for my resume rebranding services because they got jobs abroad and they wanted training with the interview process. Okay, but now I've seen a reverse format whereby people who had a job for five years, 10 years, whatever, they got sent back to India and now they are not getting that salary or that package anywhere. Even uh, people in US are struggling to find jobs, engineers. The ones who have been hit the hardest across the globe, and this is a fact, is graduates. The young graduates, nobody wants to employ them. I spoke to a businessman who was in India. He just doesn't want to employ graduates. Why? Because, you know, they make so many mistakes. You have to train them. Better than that, have one guy who knows AI, and he can do the work of uh, what 10 graduates would do. Okay. Uh, there have been cases where people have even applied for 200 jobs, 150 to 200 jobs, no response. So uh, companies are laying off thousands. But now, here's the paradox or the irony or they're laying off thousands, but they are not telling you that they are hiring new workers with new skills. And uh, the part which they're keeping it hidden from you is they are paying them revised salaries. Okay, I'll get more into that now. So now the question is, why are these layoffs happening? If you see the news, you'll hear the bullshit which is being reported like a parrot by Sundar Pichai, Satya Nadella, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, every Tom, Dick and Harry is going to say AI, we are AI. And I'll tell you why they say AI, because they are lying to you. Okay, it's not an explicit lie, but it's a lie. What do I mean? I'll explain. See, when uh, COVID hit now in 2022, 20, 2020 and 2022, um, the world got locked up overnight and everything had to go digital. Remember the, how Zoom suddenly took off and Zoom was suddenly the hottest company in the world. Everyone started Zooming and everyone thought, I will buy online, I will eat online, I will live online. Even sex was online. Yeah. Tech companies saw this massive opportunity where they believed this was going to be the future of work. You remember, even on LinkedIn, they had uh, exercise from home while working. They showed this lady while she was typing and she's on the treadmill. Actual lady, Indian lady. She was trying to show. I posted a comment. I said, what bullshit is this? Like, who the hell does a computer work while being on a treadmill? man? What nonsense is that? Uh, well, she didn't like my comment. She not only deleted it, she reported it and blocked me and I got a warning from LinkedIn. Anyway, so uh, they believed, tech companies, that this was the future. Amazon grew, uh, employed people from 800,000 to 1.5 million from 2019 to 2022. Google's workforce grew an additional of 67%. Let that sink in. So if they had 100, now they had 167. Meta doubled from 43,000 employees and eight to 87,000 employees. Good days. Wow. However, in 2022, when the world reopened and um, companies straight away gave explicit instructions, like especially Tesla, you don't come home, uh, sorry, you don't come to the office, don't bother, stay at home, you're fired. People thought they could bully the companies. No, I will work from home. You, I give you the ultimatum. Well, Little did they realize that uh, you're not indispensable. So, office work resumed. People had to lift their sorry ass and go to work. Interest rates went up. Companies realized, oh, sheesh, man, we hired too many people. There's no place to work and we don't have that much business. But if you notice, nobody admitted their mistake. Nobody admitted their mistake. Instead of admitting their mistake, instead of saying, we fucked up, you know, we overhired. 
Americans never do that. Donald Trump, you think Donald Trump ever will say, I made a mistake, you know, I shouldn't have done that, you know. No, they're never wrong. Americans are never wrong. Uh, CEOs are never wrong. They're visionaries. Uh, the new generation with their AI, they are never wrong. They know everything. So, instead of admitting that they overhired, what did they say? Well, what are you hearing in the media? We are now moving towards AI. AI. And if you're not AI compliant, bye-bye. So, instead of saying that we made a mistake, we fucked up by overhiring people, if AI is the future. These were not AI compliant. And they started terminating people with the excuse of AI. In fact, I spoke to one guy from India who works for an AI-based company. I asked him, man, you are in the leading front of AI. You know, what did he tell me? Senior, senior guy. He said, boss, they have just rebranded everything that we do with AI. They just put that word. We are doing the same shit. They just put AI in everything. And that enables us to charge more money. Because it looks like, oh, sophisticated. Okay. So, most workers who were hired between 2020 to 2022 were laid off. Bye-bye. And uh, now the question comes, is it only because of excess hiring? See, this is where you need to understand simple basic economics. Um, when they terminate you, your salary is a big chunk. Okay, it gets kept. It is not used. I'll give you, I'll give you a simple uh, analogy here. Now, when you hire an American, you pay much more. But when you hire a guy from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India, you pay much less. I'll give you facts. A US software engineer earns $150,000 a year. Same job profile, same responsibilities. If you hire in India, same. You pay $15,000 US dollars a year. $150,000, $15,000. One-tenth the price. So instead of having, uh, let's say, one very expensive American, 10 equally competent, hardworking, will nod their head and say, yes, sir, very obedient Indians, which is better. In fact, uh, you remember that brand, uh, what is that? Builder.ai. They said, we are using AI, AI, AI. Well, the AI that they had was 700 Indian engineers. It's not that they were cheap. They were good at what they did. And they were pretty affordable. Companies started firing US workers and they started getting cheaper talent, especially from Sari Jahan Siacha, India. Okay. Uh, about 20% of the US companies laying off workers were replacing them with offshore workers. Now, by the way, before you jump the gun and say, oh, this is before Donald Trump, shut your pie hole and listen. Okay. In India, over 1,950 global Capability centers, GCCs, employ more than 1.9 million people in 2025. 1.9 million. This is after, after Donald Trump put the uh, slap of, you know, you employ every foreign worker here, you have to pay excess amount. Guess what? It's still going on. I verified this with the companies that are hiring on behalf of US companies in India. Example, sales for Salesforce. Remember, they announced we are terminating people for AI and all that bullshit. They have employed 13,000 workers in India. Hush, hush. Remote work has become very common in India and made it easier for them to employ people in India. Companies like Salesforce, Microsoft, Amazon have boosted India's tech sector so much that uh, now literally everyone is jumping into the tech sphere. U.S. factories helped China grow there in the 1980s, 1990s, lifting 800, people, 800 million people out of poverty. But they created a strong uh, competitor in China. Now they're doing it in India. Amazon uh, got 10,044 H-1B visas. Its cloud division, AWS, got 2,347 developers, totaling of 12,000 in the first half of the year. Okay, all this is cheap Indian labor. Salesforce that cut 4,000 jobs claiming AI first. Well, they got 1,137 H-1B visas in 2025 and a total of 3,683 since 2023. Tesla is facing a lawsuit of laying off 6,000 US workers while at the same time 
applying for 1,355H 1B visas to save money. Why do you think Donald Trump jumped the gun and said, hey, you have to pay all this money? Why do you think he's having these panchayat meetings with these guys? If AI was replacing coders, my dear friends who support AI, why do these companies need 10,000 plus visas? Why don't you just replace them and put AI? Why are you replacing them and getting new ones? Why? Because before you were doing maybe desktop development, maybe you were doing uh, mobile phone development. Now they want AI based development. US workers are losing their jobs because they are too expensive. While visa workers take lower pay, lower benefits, and uh, they are ready to slog their ass even without extra pay. Now, now comes the part where what is the indirect benefit, which nobody talks about. The 2017 Tax Cut and Jobs Act has lowered US corporate tax from 35% to 21%. See, Amazon and all these companies, you know, they have the best lawyers, best accountants. They will not tell you how they save money. It's a normal man who pays money. Big guys don't. They also tax overseas profits only 10.5% compared to 21% for operating in US with US profits. So it encourages companies to move abroad. Don't you think they will uh, have, uh, you know, companies with different names, service providers, you think they are not smart enough for all this? In September 2025, when Donald Trump came out with a 100,000 new visa rule to discourage foreign workers being hired, guess what? There's a loophole to that also. Companies can still have offshore companies, offshore jobs without visas, without giving them all the benefits that they have to give in USA, thus saving money plus saving tax. Well, they forgot to tell you this. Okay.